So I'm revisiting this heater control system for my wife's car. This is a Toyota Ipsum. What I showed previously is I pulled it apart trying to fix the display here because I had this issue with this part of the display not displaying. And at the time I thought I could see a crack and actually see if it look, look there now, the liquid crystal has been leaking out. So yep, that confirms that, yep, it's definitely got a crack. What I've done is I've gone to a Rickers and I've grabbed another one. This is different, it's not exactly the same. This one's got the sonar thing on it and this display over here. This doesn't have that, so I can't just swap this out. This is like 20 bucks, right? But what it does have is a good display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the display from this unit, put it in this unit, and test it. So I've got to get this unmounted. Actually, I need to pull this knob off here first. This knob's got to come off. And that was quite stiff. But as I've done it once already, it should be a bit easier. Yeah, that's a bit easier this time. Last time it was a real mission. Got this bezel here, we'll get it off, which is stuck down. It's got a double sided tape. Because underneath that is a screw which you have to take out. I had this apart previously when I replaced all of the backlight bulbs because they're all blown. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back and check it. I'll probably link it up there somewhere or something or at the end of the video or something like that shows you how to re replace all the bulbs I also did some refurbishing work on that as well to try and fix any potential bad solder joints that kind of thing in case that was what's causing the problem with the display and it wasn't that in the end it was displays bad somehow it's cracked who knows how long it's been like it but uh, anyway we should have swapped this out Display should be identical, should be exactly the same units. I'd be really surprised if the displays are different. I mean, it's the same year car. The only difference is it's got different options. So, it's basically the same module. So now this will want to come off. But I've got to unclip it as well. Just about it. This clip here didn't really see. Okay, here we go. Alright, that's the cover off. So, as you can see, this area is different to this one. So, I can't just swap the whole unit out, which would be convenient, but uh, not so possible. So, there you can see the damaged display there. If I get the light on the right, I might be able to see the crack, but uh, anyway, emanates from there, which is interesting. So we'll take this display of this one, take the display of that one, and swap them around. So I've still got to get this thing apart fully yet. We've got a few more clips to take off. All these buttons do fall off. Um, I think you can't mess it up. I think they only go one way anyway. So front, rear, mode, AC, off, auto, we suck. Take those off, I was just going to get in the way. And this has basically a flex down there, which is really short. <laughs> All right. So I might be able to do it without taking the whole flex out. Or I might take the ball out. Let's take the ball out. It might just be easier rather than fighting with it. So obviously to do this, this one it's going to be exactly the same process to strip it down to get it apart. Now I can get to all these solder joints here, I can desolder this display, repeat the process on that one, and then swap them out. Alright, let's get this thing out. So here's my desoldering gun. You get the idea. Okay, there we go. The display is out. So I desolder those. 
gave all the pins a bit of a wiggle to find out which ones are holding it and just kept on working on those ones. There's a couple, one right in the middle here was a bit stubborn and one of the ones towards this end was a little bit stubborn. But um, anyway, it dropped out. There is that display. Just got to repeat the process with that one. And this one I've got to be really careful with because this one I must not break. So if you compare these two units, this one doesn't have the buzzers in the back of it either. So we've got these two buzzers. This one doesn't have that because this one doesn't have the sonar option. Anyway, let's desolder these legs and get this thing out. Part number of the board is identical, so I'm confident it's all good. It's just some different population of the boards. I'm going to show you this. So I've just gone through and desoldered this one. This pin's moving. This pin here is a bit stiff. That one there doesn't want to move. That's moving, moving, moving. All right, if I do it maybe from the back, maybe you'll see it moving. See, that one doesn't move because that's still done. These are moving. All right, so I've got three pins here which look like they need doing again. So it's those two there and this one here, which are very similar to the ones I had problems with in the last one as well. So obviously these ones got a bit more thermal mass for some reason. All right, I think I'll just finish that. Yep, there's the display. Cool. So set that display out, let's uh, put it into the other one. So I have to do this really carefully. Let's get the display, I have to line that up into there. And hopefully get all the holes through. We'll just move it around so it comes right. So what I need to do now, I've actually got that lined up. Is actually tack a couple of these pins so the display doesn't move, then I can solder them all in. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because I want to keep it this way up at the same time. I think that's tacked. There we go, so a few random pins. They're still not going to go anywhere. I'll solder this all up, then I'll come back. Now let's go through the process of cleaning this up. Put it partially done. So this is just to like loosen up all the bad stuff. And then I'll go through with the towel afterwards and actually try and remove it. What do you reckon? Good as new? Not bad, is it? So, let's put it back together and we'll try it out. Alright, that's that part clipped back together and all the screws put back in that rear panel. Now, what I'll do is um, give these a wipe down so you don't have any fingerprints on these and anything like that. And then I can put it back into the main housing. Right, let's refill these buttons. Like I said, they only go in one spot, so you can't really mess it up. I say as I try and figure out how I've messed it up. Hmm. Like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Is it right? Like that? No? No? Oh, look. look. These are going to be mystery buttons now. Ta-da! Right, it's like a child's puzzle. Oh, let's fit, fit that back in there. Let's get it roughly lined up. There you go, clips going in. And I'll put some screws back in. Something I always do when I put these screws in is I go backwards before I go forwards with them. That way they drop into the original threads. Like that.
refit the ring, it's got like a little indent on it just there which goes at the bottom right. refit the knob Somewhere like oh, that, it's tight, like I said. Okay, done. Hope it works. All right, so excuse the shaky hand cam. So let's try it out. Here we go. We have a full display now. Never ever seen that before in this car. Okay, it's push modes. Yeah, excellent. Look at that. All working. Winner, winner. People turn the temperature down a bit. Sweet. It's all good. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're already subscribed. Click the bell icon, all that sort of stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Obviously, I've got to put this back together properly first, but you know. Bye bye.